So hello, my name is Thomas Rauscher. I'm the owner of Garden Gnome Software. So first I want to give you a quick overview of Panot VR for the people who don't know it. So Panot VR is a software to create virtual tours. You can export to HTML5, you can use WebVR, you can upload to Google Street View. Um, it's not a web solution, it's a regular desktop app. So this means it works offline. The updates and maintenance, et cetera, helps on, uh, happens on your schedule. Um, it's a one-time payment. And um, nowadays, uh, very important, we don't have your data. We don't have your client's data. So every, even if you upload to Google, everything goes from your machine directly to Google. We don't know who your clients are. So we are around for a while. Um, so the first version was in 2007. We um, created a completely new user interface in 2015. It's available in multiple languages. It um, is optimized to really work with large images and also with a lot of images. So uh, gigapixel and thousands of nodes is not a problem. And we support panoramic video since 2007. So um, let's get to the good stuff. With the latest version, we introduced uh, WebVR. So what this means is you can have an enter VR uh, button in your browser on a virtual headset. Um, and the advantage is that this works cross-platform. form. So um, we support all the devices and all, also all future devices. So like Windows Mixed Reality, Oculus, Google Daydream. Um, and we have a fallback for cardboard, so um, you can use this. Um, we use multi-resolution for um, WebVR. So this means we use the same images that you already upload for your regular tour. And if a new device comes out with a higher resolution screen, it's automatically supported and gives you a nice crisp image. We also support the controller. Um, this is very important to give you a nice experience because you can just point at the hotspot, click, and go to the next node. And um, you can also use uh, swipe to rotate. So if you have a limited space and you cannot turn around, you can just swipe on the controller and rotate the scene and this way navigate through a tour. Um, some, um, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, and for the uh, next beta version, we also introduce uh, custom hotspot images and um, we have uh, native stereo support. So for stereo panoramas, um, you can import a single image with uh, the different formats, like um, uh, top, bottom, or left, right, as a rectangular. And we also support um, features like patching. You can convert the whole image into the different formats. And we also support um, the, from rendering software, most of the time you get just a strip out, and we support those different tile formats. Another new feature is um, custom hotspot images. Sometimes um, you just want to use a single image for a special hotspot, like a enter here or a moving clock or um, the door opening. Um, and in the past, you had to create a custom uh, hotspot template. Um, and now you can just um, add this image directly um, to the hotspot. And you can still uh, fully customize this in the skin. So um, you have like both of um, good things of both worlds with this. Um, WebVR, of course, needs a browser. Um, it has some disadvantages. So I want to give a shout out to VR2 Viewer. This is a native app uh, by 3DV. Um, this app can import uh, Panot VR tours. 
And of course, it has the advantages of a native app, like you can use it offline, you can have a white label application, so that if you're at the show or something, a person just can put on an Oculus Go and see the tour from start. Uh, it also supports stereo and video, and they have a remote live view, so you can display the content of the headset to an external monitor. So um, another area where we improved our software is embedded video. So like, you know the trick. Um, you have a moving part uh, of a panorama. Um, this worked for a long time, but now we um, uh, improved the workflow. So um, now you just have to um, select a patch from the area where um, you want to have the moving part. This opens uh, Photoshop automatically. Then you just bring in the video, position it um, where uh, the images matches the um, uh, the video matches the image. Then you create a mask. Take out the part. I don't, don't see this moving. Um, then you uh, <laughs> um, uh, make the um, video match um, the image so that the, um, the colors look the same because videos often have a different color space. So um, they um, look a little bit different. And when you're done, you just render out the video. And then when you're back in uh, Pano 2 VR, you just click the Convert Batch to Video button, select the file we just created in um, Photoshop, and um, then the video is uh, embedded in this place. Of course, this was very fast. Uh, we will have a tutorial on our website soon. And this is the result. Um, another area we have improved the software is image input. And we worked on the loading times. As, a, as an example, I used a 2.5 gigapixel image in TIFF. Uh, directly out of a stitcher. So as a base Photoshop, the latest version takes 49 seconds to load. Pano 2 VR 6.0 took 44 seconds. And in 6.1, we are now down to 17 seconds. But of course, you can um, store a TIFF file in our own multi-tiled uh, format. Um, and this gets the loading time down to 4 milliseconds. So <laughs> As this is not really a challenge, um, I tested uh, this also with a uh, 400 gigapixel image, as you can see from Jeffrey Martin on the side. Um, the loading just takes 87 milliseconds, so it's still, yeah, doable. So a picture or it didn't happen. So here's a quick video. Just drop in the image and it's fully loaded. You can zoom in as far as you like and no flickering, no caching, no nothing. This works without a cache file, just yeah, dropping an image. So um, another area we improved things is our skin editor. The skin editor is um, our way to create the user interface for your virtual tour. Um, we have some built-in skins, but we also provide uh, more than 50 components ranging from simple social media buttons to um, WebGL, GPU, snow effects. So um, <laughs> they, they can access a lot of internal things in there, but also are quite easy to build. Um, the whole skin editor uh, works without programming, but if you want to, you can, of course, do, do crazy things. Um, and for new users, this is sometimes a little bit uh, intimidating. Um, so we try to improve the software that you don't have to go into the um, skin editor to do basic tasks. So with the new version, you can uh, recolor the skin 
from outside. This means if your customer has a specific color scheme for the website, you can just change the colors of the buttons to match, um, match it very easily. This also makes sense for advanced users because then you can have your, your own uh, skin. And depending on the project, you just change the colors of the skin and the colors are stored in the project and you don't have to create separate skins for uh, each project. Um, another often requested feature is an accordion menu. So the new version um, has the missing parts <laughs> That, um, um, that we needed to build such a thing. Um, as you can see, it's uh, highly customizable, so you can have images there, or you can just have the text, and um, you have the sliding effect. Of course, if you have a, your virtual tour done, so what do you want to do with it? Um, we already have um, WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla plugins. But um, we also rewrote, rewrote the WordPress plugin uh, from ground up to support um, the Gutenberg editor. So you can now um, just drag and drop in a Gardenon package into WordPress, and it's a normal Gutenberg block that you can um, design your website around. Um, it still supports the old shortcode for the classic editor and Elementor, and it should be available in around July. Another thing we do is um, Street View export. Um, we have Street View Workflow Edit certi certified, so this means you can upload tours, you can download and modify tours, etc. We also support levels and um, new in version 6.1 is you can uh, link to external panoramas, so you can split up large projects into smaller chunks. And thanks to an API change, <laughs> uh, we can also now filter and search um, tours in the tour browser. Um, and one more thing that will be new, uh, Panotour Pro import. <laughs> so we have a lot of customers that uh, switched software. I don't know why. Um, so uh, with the next version, you can um, import uh, Panotur Pro projects and the basic stuff like images, metadata, hotspots, etc., will be imported. So you have a head start if you want to convert a tour. So in summary, yeah, next beta version will have stereo support, custom hotspot images, skin recoloring, accordion menu, and the uh, Panel to a Pro import and should be released in the middle of July. Um, if you want to learn more, we have three workshops during the week. Um, you can come to our booth. We have Facebook group, forum, or our website. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>
um, other external resources and so yeah. on? Um, like we have a fully documented API, like, um, so you can access almost anything that's internal to the software. And also the skin is just a simple um, JavaScript file, so you can look into the code and see how we do things. Like there's no hidden magic, like it's in plain sight, so we can steal our <laughs> ideas. Hey, Thomas, uh, Joby ah. here. Um, <laughs> another really nice looking release. Um, I'm particularly interested in the increased stereo support. Um, mm -hmm. I've been using the stereo feature since they were first implemented. Mm -hmm. But I find that if you're working with a big tour and adding a lot of hotspots for left and right images, um, whilst I like the control of those, I mm. used to end up having to reference the coordinates for the left eye to do for mm. the right eye. Can you tell us um, what hotspot placement is like for with the new stereo support? Um, like in the old system, this was kind of a hack. Like you had to import both images in, in a sequence. But with the new system, um, the node itself knows that it's stereo. So you can also mix regular nodes with stereo nodes. And you just place the hotspots normally, and they will just have the um, one placement. And we have a distance field, so you can de define how deep the uh, hotspots is in the image. And yeah, so it's like how it, how it should be. Like the first version was more like a okay <laughs> hackish for export users, but now it's like proper. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, thank you very much for a really exciting release.